I don't know. It's 4th of July, and that's the closest thing I have to a firework. But if you're not American, then well, lucky you. Hey, it's Curly, and today I wanted to talk about my BSF 2022 experience. How I almost didn't even end up going. How I almost stole Auto Orange's top 8 experience. And how I only ended up going thanks to Reddit. So I guess first off, what even is BSF? Well, BSF stands for Bisher Road Spring Fest, and it is a tournament that is held around the world in various locations, and you can compete to be the Spring Fest champion. It was a pretty sort of monumental thing that we actually got it this year, because it didn't happen the last couple of years given that, well, you know, COVID happened, right? So it was one of the, I think it was the very first uh, Bushi Road like announced or organized event where everyone was actually in person, which was really nice. And then obviously, since I started playing Vanguard pretty much just as the pandemic started, I had never gone to any in person Bushi Road event, so obviously, I was super psyched for this. But uh, the thing about BSF is that it's a team event, so you need a team of three fighters to actually be able to compete in the tournament. And since, once again, I haven't been playing Vanguard till literally the pandemic started, I don't really know anyone physically or <laughs> in person that actually plays Vanguard aside from my fiance, who, you know, I managed to get her into it, but that still only makes two of us. So that has to say, we were both really psyched for this event because, you know, throughout the entirety of us playing Vanguard, we've only been really playing Vanguard with each other. Aside from, you know, BRO, where we managed to play against some people online and maybe some remote fights, this was actually an experience to actually be able to play, you know, Vanguard with a lot of different people, right? So much so that we actually almost considered going to the event that was in Illinois and in Georgia. Uh, ironically so, while I was considering that, I actually got a message from Wolf the Legend asking if I was gonna go to Illinois. And I was thinking like, oh man, this would be perfect. Uh, the two of us can fly out there. We can team up with him, we can go ahead and do the event. Um, but at the time, I wasn't really sure if I was going to be able to make it or if either of us was going to be able to make it because it was a, a little bit short notice. And we also um, looked at the prices for the flights and they were like $400 or something like that. And we we're like, yeah, maybe this isn't such a good idea after all. So unfortunately, we declined. But I guess that ended up being for the better because he actually ended up teaming up with Outer Orange and they managed to make top eight. You can watch their videos. Uh, and they'll be linked in the audio card and in the description down here. So that, I just find that kind of funny that had we actually just bit the bullet, bought the plane ticket anyways and went out there, went to BSF with him, uh, Outer Orange would have not at least teamed up with him, right? She might have still gone, but would have been with someone else. But I'm also really glad I didn't because I ended up having to fly out to Florida while that was happening to go take care of my dad. So that would have been really, really awkward <laughs> if I had bought these really expensive plane tickets just to then not be able to use them and not be able to go to the event. My fiance and I really hadn't been going to locals during all this time because uh, aside from the fact that again, COVID, still a thing out there, right? Uh, we had both gone through major surgery and we weren't really in a position to like put ourselves at risk just yet. So we wanted to sort of wait until like uh, half a year has passed and that's kind of when the doctors give us the okay to like fly and like do all these other things, right? So I wanted to kind of wait until then before going to locals, but unfortunately once we finally started doing that and got like the courage and all that stuff uh, to do so, BSF was like maybe two, three weeks away at this point. And anyone that we kind of like met at locals and managed to get, you know, to ask them if they had a team or anything, already had something set up, right? So we were kind of really in dire straits right now because uh, the thing with BCF, given that I might say BCF a couple of times accidentally, but I mean BSF, sorry about that. The thing about BSF is that, again, given COVID, <laughs> uh, you had to pre-register way ahead of time, right? I think it was like a week, like right a week beforehand. And you also had to provide, you know, your vaccination uh, proof and all that stuff, right? So that they can verify you. Uh, apparently I've heard that in previous BSFs, you can just kind of show up the same day and like, uh, make teams with people that are there and then just go ahead and register. And we were kind of hoping we could do that originally, right? That was kind of the plan of like, oh, well, we'll just go and see who we can team up with. At least we'll get to play, right? Maybe we'll find someone cool. 
But that's not a thing anymore, right? You can't do that. You have to just sign up ahead of time, right? Um, which made things really difficult for us. So that's when I kind of got desperate. I remember, I think it was right after we came home from Locals, a Sunday or might have been the next day, I just made a Reddit post um, just being like, hey, uh, if there's any one single person, because we have a team of two, if there's any one singular person that wants to go to BSF uh, in New Jersey, let me know. Uh, we, you know, we have a team of two. We would love to be able to play with someone. And, you know, surprisingly, I thought that was gonna, like, just get ignored. People told me, like, go, go fuck off, go do something else or whatever. Uh, we actually got a couple of responses. There were actually three potential teammates that actually responded back. Uh, there was one of them who had actually told me that he uh, topped in one of the other events. I think it was in Illinois, ironically. Um, and he was thinking of maybe coming to the uh, Newark one. Uh, then there was another guy who had, I think, uh, I think he said he had like a Bruce deck that he was thinking of uh, using, because uh, I think he was confused when I told him that um, we that I had Barrel Magus and my, my fiance had um, Magnolia, so he thought you couldn't use stuff in the same nation. But I told him no, it's just you can't have the same ride line. So unless for some reason you go into uh, Barrel Magus, then you know you wouldn't be able to play. And then last, we had another person that sent a message saying that they would love to, but they would only have like a set two Nirvana deck that they could use at the moment. And I was just like, bro, I don't care. <laughs> we really don't care. Like, we're not trying to top. We're just trying to go to our first event and be able to play against people and have that experience, right? Like, we, I told them, I remember specifically saying, like, we're the kind of people that even if we go 0-9, we're, we're fine with that. <laughs> we'll go through the whole round of Swiss, we just want to play Vanguard with people. So as the weeks were going down, uh, the potential teammates just started windling down, right? The first guy that I had mentioned about, uh, that he had topped somewhere, um, he couldn't make it. I think he was in another, like, state and he was coming up and he just couldn't make it in time, so that's unfortunate. The Bruce guy... Never got back to me, unfortunately. But we had the one final shining last chance in the Nirvana guy, who I managed to talk to a little bit. And I basically managed to, uh, I guess, convince him to just use the Nirvana deck that I had. I have a Nirvana deck that I don't play myself because I don't really like Nirvana, but I just built it just to sort of test against it so that, you know, like me and my fiance can use it, figure out how it plays, play against it, figure out how to like play against it and whatnot, um, since we happen to have the pieces. And he was like, all right, fine, sure. <laughs> we'll just use your deck. And then, um, you know, he sent me all his info. I sent it all out into the registration and boom, our team was good to go. And I got the confirmation, I think like the Monday or Saturday or something like that. And we actually managed to go to BS BSF. I keep trying to say BCF. <laughs> what the hell is even BCF? Uh, BSF, which was great. Uh, I never would have thought in a hundred years that I would actually be able to, f you know, team up with someone through Reddit because I don't really do that kind of stuff. One, use Reddit. Two, ask uh, to like meet up people online. Right? That just sounds kind of weird, which is kind of ironic considering where this story is going to go. Um, so that was just really sort of strange to me that that even, you know, worked out. Um, so while that was happening, there was a vision tournament that we took part on. If you ever, you know, want to play, uh, I think they do for every format. So premium, V premium and uh, standard and as well as other tournaments. Um, I, I guess I'll have the link for them down below. But you can join the discord. They have their host tournaments all the time. Um, there was a vision tournament that was going on. It was a remote fight and I was trying to message our new teammate and ask him like, Hey, Maybe if you're in the area, relatively, maybe we can meet up, I can give you the deck. And uh, to me, it kind of felt like he was kind of like, uh, I'm going to not do that. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. And I kind of took it as, oh man, maybe this guy is going to like rip us off, like meet up. Like I just agreed to let this guy take my deck or, or use my deck. And he's just going to be like, all right, deuces, fuck you guys. And then like run away or something like that, right? So this whole time I was thinking like, oh man, what if he like, you know, just fucking swindles us or something like that? Or what if he like, um, just, just bails like last day or somewhere in between, like, you know what? 
I just don't care enough. <laughs> I don't care. Goodbye or whatever. He just completely flakes out. So I spent a good week just pondering about that. And I was just like, oh man. Oh man. Um, until the day finally came, right? Uh, we drove up all the way to New Jersey. Woke up super early because I think registration opened up at like 8 o'clock. So we left here like uh, 7. Takes us like an hour to get there. And uh, we met up with our teammate. And turns out he's actually a really chill guy. <laughs> um, and it wasn't so much that he was being sort of like uh, shady, obviously. It was just the obvious fact that I'm some random person online that he doesn't know. So he didn't feel comfortable meeting up with me. Which, in hindsight, I 100% totally understand. 100% <laughs> <laughs> totally understand that. And I'm sorry that I thought otherwise, right? Uh, so thankfully things didn't go as negatively as I was uh, thinking in my head. Things turned out really great. He turned out to be a really chill guy. Um, and we actually managed to play a little bit beforehand, which was nice. He played a match with my fiance and I think I played two games with him. And um, he's a really good player. Uh, he seemed you know, like he needed to get uh, sort of used to the deck. He had told me that he just spent a lot of time practicing on card fight area. Uh, since again he didn't have any of those cards right and uh as like as every duel went on i started to see him get way way better as he got more comfortable with the deck which was really impressive um but we just kind of like gelled really well so i was pretty excited at this point you know i could throw away all of my <laughs> crazy superstitions and just go on to the actual tournament before we do that let's uh just create a quick look at the deck that i actually brought I ended up playing with Barrel Magus, as I had mentioned earlier. The build is a little bit different from what I did for my deck profile a couple months ago now, I think. Wow. Uh, my fiance came in with Magnolia, Magnolia Elder. We wanted to do, or I wanted to do a video on uh, Magnolia Elder or her build of it, but she's kind of just been messing around with her build um, just because she hasn't really been too satisfied with how to play it because there are a lot of options and different ways you can play Magnolia Elder. And then uh, obviously our third teammate, as I mentioned, was using Nirvana, right? With the uh, Grade 4, Esper Idea, um, Hard Nirvana, the, the whole shebang. And that's what I ended up entering the tournament with. Um, and then I guess let's just go over a quick run through of how my actual rounds went. My uh, third, my not my third opponent, my third teammate, the guy that we're talking about, I don't want to say his name, for obvious reasons um so i just call him teammate for now i guess uh but he actually made a post about his uh or i should say a blog post of his run through the tournament with us obviously um and i'll include that in the uh description down below there's gonna be a bunch of links <laughs> at this rate if i keep referencing stuff but you know just in case you want to read his insight it's a nice little read so heading into the first round i tried to sort of keep in mind all of the things that i had gone over in my first uh i guess bushy official tournament in bro uh, you can find my video on that here and again description um and i kind of sort of did a breakdown of sort of like how everything went and where i went wrong what i should do um playing beforehand definitely helped because i didn't really have any of those like first round jitters there's just been a couple of tournaments where i've kind of had that i was a lot more calm and like you know secure and confident this time around right um once we finally matched up and saw who our opponent was it was kind of funny because they were like super ogs <laughs> like one of them had like a bsf um uh i said S, right yeah bsf math from like 2017 and they've been saying that oh yeah we've been playing since literally the game started and like they were just like ultra mega OG, and i was just like oh man <laughs> we're in for something in our first round right um so we talked a little bit got set up started playing i was player a right uh, my fiance was player b and our teammate was player c just for context. So that means that I, with my Barrow Magus, took on their player A, which was running prison. Um, my fiance, with her Magnolia, took on a Magnolia, and our uh, teammate took on a Bastion with his Nirvana. The reason that I kind of grimaced or gave you that look for prison is that I, before that, that vision tournament that I was talking about earlier, 
Uh, I played in that vision tournament and I played against a prison and that's kind of I think the first time I had ever played against prison um, outside of playtesting at home and it was absolutely miserable because <laughs> the guy he made sure to like you know counter blast of me I couldn't do anything he would just constantly put everything in prison he rode his um Grade 4 multiple times, um, and it was just kind of the thing where I just got so frustrated because I just didn't know what to do, and I just completely kind of tried to go through it and be calm, but I just didn't know what to do, right? I just felt completely out of my element, which I understand was part of his game plan. Um, so going into this, I had done a little bit of practice trying to figure out the prison matchup, and that was mainly just trying to figure out how the deck works, uh, teaching my fiance how to play it a little bit so she can use it against me, and vice versa me uh, learning it so i can play it and learn how to play against it so i won't say i was prepared but i did some homework <laughs> for this exam that was coming up um in general this match was pretty good i tried to use a lot what i learned but it wasn't really applicable in this match because my opponent played a more aggressive build if that makes sense so rather than throwing down a bunch of uh, Mac lights and cuff springs right away and doing all that jazz he was just sort of ramming me pretty quickly probably because I'm playing Barrel Magus right so it was a little bit more even ironically because of the fact that he was doing that and uh, I was able to you know play really well in my opinion and it got to a point where ironically the final turn on my opponent's side I, I end up losing that match he played the it's either cuff spring, I think it's cuff spring that takes the top card of your deck or maybe it's Macarite or uh, Accuse Macarite. Uh, he played one, the one that takes the top card of your deck. And the top card of my deck was actually a heal that he actually put into the prison. And then he attacked and I just couldn't guard. I needed like five more shield to guard all these attacks and I just couldn't. Ended up taking uh, the six damage, which would have been a six damage heal ironically. But unfortunately, I lost. On the far right. Uh, our teammate with Nirvana actually won against the Bastion, which is really cool. Uh, if I remember saying, I think he just rushed him down and just managed to beat him before he got to do any of his stuff, which sounds about right when you're playing against Bastion, right? So it just came down to my fiance and their uh, player B, who were, you know, on both sides using Magnolia. And uh, it was a really, really tight match. It was pretty close at one point. And um, I remember specifically my fiance kind of harps on this a little bit is that the other guy, he was able to, to sort of out loud, right? Say what was going on. He was like, all right, I remember you have X, Y, and Z in your hand, which only has X, Y, and Z guard, uh, which means I can do this. You have X, Y, and Z triggers. So he was able to just sort of like, you know, get his head in the game and sort of figure out the uh, game, uh, the state of the game very easily, right? Um, so. He was able to win, unfortunately, in the end. I think it was, um, it wasn't a very, like, strong turn. Uh, I, I, I'm trying to remember specifically what happened, but I unfortunately don't recall very clearly. But I just remember it being the kind of thing where he, like, triple checked, and it was just a bunch of crap. So had it gone to the next turn, my fiance would have been able to beat him because he wouldn't have had anything to guard with. But, unfortunately, we did take our first round uh, loss here. Oh boy, round two. Round two was very interesting. Uh, next up, again, I'm player A, so I matched up against their player A. It was Barrel versus Flagberg. Uh, my fiance with her Magnolia took on, guess who? None other than Magnolia. And then our uh, teammate was using his Nirvana against Prison. This round was really rough for all of us. Uh, my teammate lost to Prison uh, just because Prison's Prison. My fiance lost to Magnolia, but I lost way before any of them lost against Flagberg because this man rushed the living crap out of me. <laughs> and I think he beat me either before I rode Barrow or like right as soon as I rode Barrow. It might've been right before Barrow. He just rushed me and obviously I'm Barrow, so I, I can't guard or anything. He was just playing all this stuff, beat my ass down. Uh, my opponent was really cool, we got to talk a lot, because again, we were waiting for all the other two matches to finish, because he just blew me out in like literally three turns, five minutes or something like that, right? Um, and I remember, <laughs> this guy was very interesting, because he did, uh, he might, maybe it's like a, um, a, a different TCG thing, like a Pokemon TCG thing, or Magic TCG, because he did tell me he had played a lot of Magic beforehand for like many years, but uh, I, I was watching like a 
the Pokemon trading card championships. And I realized I saw a lot of players do this thing where they like shuffle over here by their ear, which is kind of strange to me. And he also did an accordion shuffle, which you know, that's when you take your cards and you like flip them together. Uh, so he did that as well. Um, and I I saw that in the uh, Pokemon Championships, the players did the same thing. So maybe that's just something that just happens in those uh, card games, because like maybe the cards are bigger or something. I don't know. But point is, he did that. So it was a little bit like, what is going on <laughs> when he did that? And then when he cut my deck, he didn't just cut my deck. He actually shuffled it, which is, again, something that happens in those TCGs from what I've seen. Um, but yeah, we just got to talk a lot. He you know, was really cool, and we talked a lot about Flagberg, because, you know, I did the video on Flagberg, so I played a little bit of Flagberg. He played it a little bit different, it's more like pure Flagberg, not really any orders, he had the, like, ride line, and all that jazz, but, yeah, my man's beat my ass. What can I say? Round three was really interesting. Um, it was against a... They, 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 they did their order a little bit interesting, because they had a player B, who was kind of like the veteran of the group, that kind of got everything, everyone else into Vanguard, and uh, he had sort of giving them like his good decks and he was playing like he told us he was playing like his like <laughs> fourth deck or whatever um, but he was he I think he also told us that he was like a judge for like Bushi Road and whatnot because it was a very interesting match I faced off with my barrel against Gravidia Gravidia Order my fiance faced off you know with her Magnolia against Greedon and then the uh, teammate of ours faced with his Verena or Nirvana uh, against none other than Barrel Magus. He told me that he managed to win that match pretty easily because beforehand when we did our like, you know, first matches in the beginning to sort of like warm up, I did give him some insight. Uh, we both gave him insight, right? My fiance gave him insight how to play against Magnolia and then I gave him insight how to play against Barrel and it seemed like he was able to use that uh, and probably the knowledge of the fact of, of the fight that we had to end up winning that match, right? I was playing against Gravidia Order, and I think I played this really well uh, for the most part, right? I was being very, you know, aggressive when I needed to, cautious when I needed to. I think I was doing a really good job. There was that one point where I think it cost me the whole match where I was thinking, all right, I have a couple cards left in my deck. He only has like maybe two or three, right? Maybe I can sort of stall this out a little bit and just win that way. But I had forgotten that they have the Shurgo that they can play now and put a bunch of Meteors back into their deck, right? And because of that one turn that I played it really defensively, he kind of stole my idea kind of afterwards and switched gears. I was like, oh man, this guy only has a few cards left in deck. I can kind of just stall this out and win by deck out. And he didn't give me any counter blasts, right? Because I had, you know, no free counter blasts. I think I was like, like four damage. And uh, we actually went to time for this match. And, you know, I was just at four damage. All of them were face down. I couldn't do anything. Kenny Ludley in hand couldn't do anything with her, unfortunately. So I just ended up swinging with Barrow with my two cards left in deck and just decked out. Unfortunately, ended up losing. But Fiance managed to clinch the win here. Uh, I, well, I should say the win was already clinched because our match was last. My match was last. Their match had already finished. But she managed to beat the Greedon player. I think she told me she like six damaged heal. And she said that uh, she was able to remember <laughs> the one time that I used Greedon after like set three and she was able to use that knowledge to like figure out what was going on um, but she actually managed to win which was great so we actually finally got a win in round three. Round four was very interesting. Uh, this was another rough round for us. We all ended up losing again. Uh, our teammate had his Nirvana versus Magnolia. He ended up losing that unfortunately and our um, my fiance had her Magnolia faced off against Kyrie, and it was, from what I remember, a really long match, but she unfortunately ended up losing that one, right? Uh, it was a really long match because they were just kind of doing the same thing, multi-attacking, and uh, Kyrie doesn't really do too much in the late game, right? I played against Prison again, and this was the more, like, Prison that I was used to, uh, with, like, you know, going into many cuff springs, accused, all that kind of stuff, uh, stalling out kind of deal. And I actually played this match really, really well. Really well. Uh, depressingly well so, considering that I still lost. Um, what ended up happening was I was doing really well. I managed to even like, you know, figure out 
and like keep track of what my opponent had in hand. I was like, all right, he only has like a Seraph Snow and like two of the things that he can barely guard with. And I managed to go in with, you know, Barrow, big turn, with Golem on and everything, blow him out, no cards in hand or that he could guard with, right? So he ended up having to take the damage, but then he's six damage shield, <laughs> which is really unfortunate. And then he just rode into, he had think, uh, yeah, he just rode into, if he didn't have it already, but he rode into his um, Pure Light and then, you know, did the thing and I just kind of fucking blew my whole load there. So there was really nothing I could do at that point and I ended up losing, which is really unfortunate. Um, I feel like so far there wasn't really much that I can do in all these matches, right? Uh, like I played to the best of my ability, which is rare. Because usually after these like matches, I think to myself like, oh man, I could have done this, I should have done this, but it was kind of like, no, I did everything I could that I feel like I could. So I fell in a good spot in, t in that, you know, in, in that terms, like mentally, like I was able to at least be confident in what I did, which was good. I just wish I wasn't <laughs> in such a big losing streak. Round five was a great round for us. I matched up against Bruce. I haven't played Bruce since like forever. And I didn't even find out what it is that Bruce does. <laughs> because I managed to just rush my opponent down completely, which is ironic considering. But I know, you know, Bruce, you have to either A, get to grade four, or B, go into final rush, right? Or both. Um, and I just didn't let him do that. I just pounded on him as much as I could. I remember I played, like, I think a, a swirler early to aggress. And then I played a swirler column. So I played another swirler and I just swung in with those just to be super aggressive. And I just kept going in and he just couldn't do anything early game. He did manage to like come back um, once he rode Bruce and he actually managed to check his over trigger. So that gave me a lot of damage. I think I no guarded it. So, you know, what would have just been like one damage ended up being like two or three or something like that. Uh, so that kind of tied up the game, but then I kind of finished them off after that, which is good. Because, you know, he would have had the Overtrigger live, he probably would have gone into his Grade 4 Bruise, Fun Rush, all that stuff. Um, so I'm very happy with the way I played that match. And it's kind of how I want to figure out a way to play Barrel. I'm going to do a video in the future, uh, in the near future, just talking about how Barrel is in Set 5. And, spoiler alert, there's really nothing <laughs> that we got that helps it, either from Festival Collection or Set 5, right? But, for Set 6 and the Trial Decks, I'm looking really optimistic about... I think I might be able to play a more aggressive early game Barrow. My fiance once again faced off against Magnolia with her Magnolia, but this time she won, which was really good. She was kind of in the same spot as me where she kind of wanted a couple of more wings, right? She wasn't like super convinced about the greed on win, but this win I was actually like, yes, we can, you know, we can do this. I'm, we're, we're card fighting now. And finally, our teammate with Nirvana managed to take on the uh, Bastion again and wipe it out. I'm pretty sure it was the same thing as the first time where he just was able to rush them down. They couldn't get any of their stuff. You know, good old Bastard Brick. Then round six happened. This is the only match that I have the biggest regrets about. This one was really close. Um, I was facing against Verena. So I tried to do the same thing my teammate did and use the knowledge that I gained from our, you know, test fight in the beginning uh, and figure out how to play against Nirvana. I was even telling him specifically like, oh, I know that for Nirvana, they need to do X, Y, and Z. So I know I should do X, Y, and Z against Nirvana. Because uh, I do have some experience playing against Nirvana. I've played a lot of them in different tournaments, like BRO, stuff like that. And this was a really close match. Uh, it was neck and neck. I think we were both at like five damage. We were, you know, healing, doing all that stuff. We both, I think <laughs> there was a point, if I remember this correctly, they went in, they swung in with their um, Nahar Nirvana. And he checked the OT and restood it with 100 million power. And I was kind of like, obviously I'm not guarding that. <laughs> no PGs, just bring it on, man. And I managed to then check my own OT, <laughs> which was really cool. So that actually kept me alive because I was able to give the 100 million to Barrow, which means that he couldn't attack Vanguard that turn, right? So I was really lucky there. But I completely goofed towards the end here, right? And this will forever haunt me every time I think of BSF. Um, so our teammate, he faced off against Buff Sagra, probably the only Buff Sagra in the entire tournament, and he managed to win. And my fiance faced against Prison. We had been talking a lot about how Magnolia is supposedly really good against Prison, and how I faced Prison like twice, and I was really hoping maybe she would get it so she can use the advantage and win that match, but unfortunately she ended up losing. Back to me, 
I was the last deciding match because it was one and one and it was up to our match to decide who wins this round. And I looked at my deck at this point after that OT turn and saw what I thought was three cards left in my deck. And I was like, oh man, if I use Barrel's skill to swing in here, I'll counter blast one, draw two cards left, and then I'll drive check two cards, I lose, right? Immediately. Um, so I decided to just swing in without it. Then I went ahead and I checked my deck again. Turns out I actually had four cards left in my deck instead of three. So I could have used a skill, maybe even won that turn. Uh, my opponent had a lot of cards in hand, so it's possible that maybe it didn't matter in the end. But the fact that I kind of like mentally gave up and I was kind of like, oh man, there's nothing I can do. Instead of just making sure and like, you know, checking and whatnot was really what irks me to this day because we probably could have won that match potentially and we would have had a much better um, round result in the end. Fortunately, we did end up losing this round. And then our last round, I played against a Gravidio with my Barrel and I managed to win. It wasn't really too much uh, that I can say here. I was really upset about the previous match and I was just like, God damn it, I could have maybe won that. And I actually thought, we actually thought that was the last round, right? So that's probably why I was a little, a little bit more like, oh man, fuck kind of its mindset, but now that the seventh round was the actual last round, I was like, no, <laughs> I'm going out with a bang, and I managed to beat out this Gravidio. And it was just a pretty basic play, you know, I just did barrel things and won the game. My fiance faced off against Verena, unfortunately lost the big power columns, and our teammate faced off a Clarissa and actually managed to win. Um, overall, I think he performed exceptionally well, and that's kind of one of the reasons why I've I was a little bit upset about our run because I feel like if I had maybe won one or two more games, uh, we probably would have had a pretty decent standing, right? Because he did manage to win a couple of really good games. I mean, he did go five and two at the end of the whole event, right? So if I had just won that one match that I messed up on and that uh, match where one of the other matches, maybe if I had just found a way to win, right? Which is kind of the problem. Like a, at the moment, I was thinking like, oh man, if only I had done something, but I couldn't really find anything, right? It was just kind of like, I just lost because I lost, right? Um, aside from that one against the Marina where, you know, I, or Nirvana where I, I know I could have done better. Everything else was kind of like, there's not really much that I can do, right? Um, I can't do anything about a six damage heal. I can't do anything about getting decked out, right? Any of that stuff. Maybe I could have played a little bit better against that first video, but in any case, that was my BSF 2022 experience. I had a really good time. I was really excited to actually play in person with, you know, see so many people and talk about Vanguard with so many people in person. It was really nice. I'm really hoping next year to go, obviously. And I'm thinking I might actually do like a whole circuit and go to a couple of different ones. We'll see if uh, that's even feasible and if I can find a teammate that I can travel with. Um, but speaking of the teammate, uh, thank you so much if you do manage to watch this. Uh, sorry, <laughs> not that I told you this, but you saw it from this video. Sorry for implying that maybe you were being shady. Um, and you played really well, bro, and hopefully we can play again sometime in the future. And I think that'll do it for this video. Uh, let me know what you guys thought in the comments down below, especially if you went to BSF yourself. Let me know how it went for you or if you want to go next time, but until then, take care of yourself.